everyone. Welcome to the Q&A for Returning to Reims, which is screening as part of our current section at the 59th New York Film Festival. I'm very pleased to have Jean-Gabriel Perrier with us right now to talk a little bit about his feature. Jean-Gabriel, hello. How are you? Hello. Uh, really fine. Uh, thank, yeah, thanks uh, again for taking the time to discuss your film with us today. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, for sharing it with us for the festival. Um, it's a really remarkable achievement in archival cinema in, in adaptation. Um, it's so detailed, but also you know, quite expansive in how it raises questions about class, uh, the evolution of labor and politics, uh, cinema itself um, within this framework of a personal narrative. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm very interested to hear how this project began for you and, and sort of how it evolved um, in time, but I'll start by asking you how you came across this source text, uh, the, the, the eponymous memoir by Didier Arabon. Yes, yeah, so, um, in fact, the, the idea of the film uh, itself uh, came from a producer that I, I did not knew before. She gave me a call saying, yeah, I want to make an adaptation of uh, Returning to Rance by Didier Arabon. Uh, I feel that it, it should be done with uh, footages and pre-existing material and archives. And so I know you work and I want uh, some kind of collaboration with you. Um, I knew the book because I, I read it years ago and I really like the book for many reasons, but you know, you don't have to make film every time you read a book. So it was just an interesting book for me and uh, important because myself, I share a lot of the experience of Didier as trans class, homosexual, and, and everything is describing in the book. But when she gave me a call, I, I was uh, about to say no, because usually I never accept. One producer gave me, uh, asked me to make films uh, with a precise topic. Uh, but then I just, before I met her, I decided to read again the book. And I was really um, reading it, uh, and in the same time trying to figure out a film from it uh, changed the way I read it. And it's, there are some parts, uh, when I was reading, I really understood that it could be a good moment for me to come back to my own story and to uh, bring back, to share with the, uh, the audience uh, a part of it. And, and, and so I say yes, and I just jump into the project and make this film. Uh, and for sure, perhaps the first step uh, was to because the book is really like one of uh, is really like one of his biggest achievement in terms of writing. It's a way uh, that within the book it's it's like a kaleidoscope. We just jump from one time to another to one character to another to one topic to another one. And it, from it was impossible to just like uh, try to uh, pick up part of all those topic and times. So I decided that I, I needed to find like a line and to stick on it. And I decided to focus on the story of the mother of Didier Ribon, by which it was possible to give some kind of sociological and historical uh, and political history of the French working class. So um, your decision to focus on, on the mother that came because you did see her as the, the clearest line to focus on these other themes? Or did you have more of a, uh, I don't know, were there other sort of principles in mind for selecting that character? You know, this kind of, I think this kind of decision, it's always a mix in between uh, something that is more like theoretical, like I want to, if I want to, to give back this story, it could be the mother because she's the one, uh, the most preeminent character in this way because uh, Didier go back to her and she's the one that is telling the story in the book, her story. But it's also a mix of some part of some reasons that are more like intimate or private. And for example, I'm really like, I'm coming from really like a feminine uh, family. There are a lot of women, like I have six aunt for one uncle. So I, I grew up in this kind of uh, uh, feminine working class uh, family and so, when I was reading the book, a lot of uh, uh, story experiences linked to the mother or to the fact to be a woman in the working class really like um, not move me because I, I am used to it, to those story, but 
it was some part that I wanted to share because it's not so much uh, uh, told simply. So it's a mix of, yeah, a, a different kind of explanation. So um, other than, you know, reading the text, um, could you describe what your research process was like and, and especially in terms of the archival process you know you, you've you've worked in this form before um, but this project is, is also quite expansive and in, uh, in in terms of the the scope of the the history and also the material that you're working with um, so I'm, I'm just really wondering like how how that begins for you yeah it's, it's for sure as soon as I, I, I talk for myself with my team and I'm, I'm, I'm question history and go back to history um there is always like a first line of storytelling like the story of the working class the story of the mother Adige, but it's always a way to question the history of the representation in film and cinema of different topics and therefore sure it was all mainly the working class was represented in the story of the french uh, cinema and television uh and to do such films, there is several steps. The first one is simply uh, to, to go back to my own memory of films. So for example, I, because I like it, I know a lot of about um, militant cinema, uh, French documentary uh, around 68, um, French author films uh, from like more from the left uh, uh, kind of cinema. And, and so the, the first, um, step is to, to watch again this film and to start to understand what is happening from that and to start to work with that. And after it starts something that is more like uh, this kind of historical research, like in the university, it's just like going to the different kind of archive, institution with archives that can have uh, such um, footages. And in France, it's quite simple because we really like, we are a country of archiving. Uh, and, and so, for example, there was only one institution in France that had all the footages of the French television. And you just have to enter and to, uh, with key code, you can find everything that was produced for the French uh, TV. So, uh, and it's almost the same with uh, the archives of the Communist Party. They have their own uh, video and film archives. So it, it was not complicated. It's simply really time demanding. Because as soon as you have a lot of uh, access to a lot of uh, things, it just like mounts to watch everything. And uh, particularly at the beginning, because um, I like to see everything or at least try to see everything. So it, it just a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm then very curious how you edit this material. Um, I'd like, to, I'd, I'd like to hear you talk about the images first, how you sort of amass all this footage and then um, condense it. Um, but then I'd also like to hear how you edited the text itself. Um, there are obviously certain principles at work in the selection of the images. So I'm just curious mm -hmm. just how these two uh, elements work together. Yeah, I, I will start by the text because I start by the text. Uh, in fact, um, as a Told you the, the, the text is not really like in a chronological order and it's not really, it's organized by topics that uh, came uh, regularly within the book so I needed to simplify it because uh, for me I could I needed to to make some more uh, a clear uh, narration so I reshaped the book uh, in those two blocks that is more sociological and more historical but I, I did uh, a text that uh, was longer than the current text in the film. And the uh, first idea of the editing with images was to find excerpt of film or of news or whatsoever that could replace the text itself. Uh, for example, there is uh, a sequence when uh, the father is fishing in front of his factory. And that, as the except just after this one, it's a woman that said, yeah, and, and, and the man uh, came back and eat the woman and the woman eat its own children. And that for me, it was really like uh, this except replace a part of the text when Didier talk about his mother that was eaten by his father. So regularly like that, I, I, 
it was a way to, in first hand, to select it, the, the text because I couldn't skip some part. And uh, it was a way to make the relationship between the text and the footages more, uh, yeah, fitting together right? or uh, answering uh, each other, completing each other. That, that is the first line of the work of editing. And after there is something that is more, uh, there is all the archive uh, that are under the text. When the term is done in voiceover, I needed to find uh, footages that were not like, because I don't really like illust to illustrate, but I needed some images or footages to be able to answer or to respond to the text that was said. That was not the most uh, easier uh, uh, things for me. Um, and after there are um, another way to see the editing, it's also how to uh, complete, answer, uh, do a counterpoint to the text. Particularly it's clear with the uh, fiction film because, uh, because they are different and regularly they are offering some kind of irony or caricature or another way to, to question the topic of the text. Is not uh, so much close to it, but it's it's like some not pauses, but some way to just escape from the text and going back to him to it. So it's always complicated to talk about like editing, but uh, uh, there is something in those three lines uh, of work. Um, so how long does this process take for you? And, and um, yeah, day to, day to day, how much time are you sort of investing? Um, yeah, I think it, for me, it's not so long regarding uh, some of my other film. It was one, one year and a half, but it was, you know, this COVID time. So when I say one year and a half, it's like seven days of work and like 12 or 14 uh, hours a day. Uh, so perhaps with a regular uh, time work, it could be two or three years. Um, and so, the, I mean, the film is nearly exclusively um, archival. There's some original footage at the beginning, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can you no, talk, no, it's right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, I didn't uh, catch your question, sorry, because of the sound. Um, I, I just was remarking on that the film has some some original footage that was shot mm. right at the beginning of the film. Can you talk a little bit about that decision? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was not um, the way the film is, is uh, done uh, today with only the beginning with some uh, footages and only archive material for all the rest. It was not uh, uh, my first idea. My first idea was to mix uh, pre-existing film and some interview I did for the, for the film but I, that I decided to not use. Uh, in fact, I uh, make an interview with people of my family about their own life and experience that are really close to the ones of Didier Ribon. But I have a problem of uh, to mix those interviews with the voiceover and archive because it's in a way there was some kind of grammatical uh, problem with uh, the past and the present because people were talking from the, in the archive people are talking in the present time. The voiceover is on the past so to have interview from today, people talking about them, their life today, but also the life of their mother and grandfather and everything on the past, it was really blurry in terms of who is talking and, and there was too much mother, too much grandmother. So, it, it, so I decided to skip it, but I kept the beginning and the beginning, it's, it's more like an introduction for the author of the book, for Didier Ribon, because it's the places where he used to live, where his family used to live, where his father and mother were working. So only himself uh, can recognize those places, but at least he gives some kind of uh, a feeling of uh, what is a Reims and, uh, and this, really, this kind of place really gray and really like a uh, depressing place where he grew up. So you, yes. So you interviewed a number of people, and I, I'm I'm wondering in what way that eventually influenced um, how you how you cast um, and how you decided on the voiceover for the film. Could you talk a little bit about um, uh, 
working with Adele and Elle um, as the voice for this text and, and sort of how you decided on that? Yeah, uh, there, there, are, there are different kind of answers that were all uh, reunite and, and, and make probably the choice of Adele and Elle, Adele and Elle quite obvious. It's, uh, the, the, the book is really um, open to the audience. When it's open, I mean that you can enter into the book if you share the experience of Didier or part of it, but you can also enter and be moved and questioned by the story, even if you are not, um, if you have another kind of life experience. I knew that uh, to add archives and another experiences of people within the film, with the text, uh, will make it uh, more open, let's say, to the audience. And so to have a voice that have nothing to do with the voice the sh that was supposed to be the one of Didier Ribon, so a male, uh, older, and to have like a young female voice was a way to make like, yeah, to, to go somewhere else. Uh, so that is the first reason. The second reason is because the in the film I already focus, uh, because it's the story of the mother of the experience of, of the woman in the working class. So to have a female voice, moreover, a, a voice that for, of someone that is fran in France is uh, some kind of political figure, some, someone important in terms of uh, um, struggle for the woman. And it was logical in a way. Uh, she, she can yeah, bring her energy of her own fight within the film. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a two main reason for that. Um, we have to wrap up soon, but I, I, I want to ask you if, um, if Didier has, has seen this film yet, um, and if and how you and if you worked with him in any way on this film? Yeah, we don't really like work together because uh, for me it was uh, it would have been complicated to uh, uh, work with uh, with him closely, like on a uh, like every day by basis, like talking and deciding together of everything because uh, for me, I don't, I don't know how to work with people. But, uh, and for him, it was impossible to work on the film like, uh, like properly because it's, he told me that is his own story. For him, it's really complicated to say, oh, I prefer that and not that because he, he writes the book. It's, he, he can't decide about what could be important uh, to share. But so uh, he, was, he was there alongside the process, for example, uh, I share with him the first edit of the text, and after he saw several working progress of the editing until the last one. And, and, and at every step, we discuss about what I was doing. It was really important for me that this, I, it, it's so private, this book for him, that I did not want to make this kind of mistake because it happens that to choose, I don't know, an excerpt that for him could be so strange or so. I, create some kind of awkward feeling. So it was important to have his feedback, his feedbacks, the feedbacks, sorry. Um, well, I think that's all the time we have right now. Mm -hmm. um, Gabriel, uh, mm -hmm. I have to head into the festival to do a Q&A. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, thank you so much uh, again for taking the time to talk uh, and again for sharing your film. Uh, it's really remarkable. Um, I can't wait to see it in a cinema. It's going to screen tomorrow. Well, thank you very much for the discussion.